up sauce gang and welcome back to the channel hot sauce beats here with what's gonna be a reaction that's probably gonna freak me out because we are back with in a nutshell's brand new episode of what actually what actual aliens might look like now anytime we talk about something with aliens or nuclear bombs with in a nutshell it ends up giving me nightmares because it, it all seems like it could be a reality but I'm beyond hyped to jump into this, but before we do, please show in a nutshell some love by subscribing to the channel and chat. We're trying to get to a quarter million subs. So if you haven't yet, please smash that subscribe button and join the Sauce Gang family. But enough talking, let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot Sauce Beats is finally here. Hot Sauce Beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot Sauce Beats. Oh, it's time to get our learn on. What Time do real aliens look like? like? We know that life on Earth is incredibly diverse and exists in the strangest and most yeah. extreme places. From blue dragon sea slugs to eye eyes or cries of snails blue dragon with sea slugs, of Or whatever this is supposed to be. Let's use our imagination and real science to travel to three possible worlds, each more alien than the next. Okay. Put on your future science suit and enter so the it's not here to witness wonders it's never seen check. before. Not here. The Eye of Oculus. This is the red dwarf star Oculus, yeah. five times smaller than our sun and a lot less bright. A bit larger than Earth, but orbiting its star 20 times closer, you see the ice hell of the planet Iper. It's tidally locked, so one side experiences a never-ending night and the other an eternal day lit by the star's dim glow. In the region facing the dim star directly, temperatures are warm and pleasant. The hell of ice has melted into a shallow, black ocean, the eye of Iper. About the size of Europe, barely 200 meters at its deepest point, churned by a never-ending storm where hot air meets the frigid winds from the icy outskirts. Livable conditions! But I'm just a little this part of it! chaos, we find calm stability, an ecosystem in almost perfect balance. Let's dive in. Instead of meeting open water, we splash into a floating underwater jungle. We know places like this at home. Kelp forests made from seaweeds up to 65 meters long, sheltering countless smaller creatures. On That's Earth, crazy. we get just abundant bright of... sunlight, so our plants evolve to be green, absorbing just the most useful its red livable. wavelengths for photosynthesis and reflecting did. away the rest. But Oculus shines not nearly as bright, and its dim rays are even further dulled by the storm. So here, plants are a deep black to make use of the weak infrared leftovers, uh, which also gives the Eye of Iper its striking the Eye of Iper. Over billions of Dude, years, I love the internet shows videos. Occupied all possible They're space in some the of the, the best the educational videos there, there are. The seabed mud <laughs> I stuttered. And providing access to nutrients. They drop their seeds in the few free spaces in the mud. Only death makes room for new life. Big and streamlined teardrop-shaped creatures push through the dark water. They kind of look like fish. Just like many sea creatures on Earth, their shape is optimized for the lowest drag when traveling through water. Like underwater cattle, they lazily swim through the forest, grazing on leaves in peace. Water cow, huh? Suddenly, a patch of I wonder what kind of hamburgers they would taste and like. around a distracted grazer, dragging it down into hungry jaws. A predator that's had eons to adapt its camouflage to fool its prey. But not only by imitating leaves. Both hunter and prey never evolved eyes in this dark underwater murk. Instead, oh, I ain't they swim in there. battle with sounds and textures. Listen. There's a whole cacophony down here. Countless species are singing to each other. Sending warnings or invitations. Oh, I don't like those sounds, dude. Song. <laughs> it reminds me of the movie like Alien. Like the noisy jungles of Earth. Except howling monkeys and screaming peahs are replaced by chattering seed eaters a little freaky, bro. with snapping pincers, squeaking spike bulbs loaded with poison, and the flailing fins of starfish-shaped grabbers hunting small prey. The flailing Beautiful fins, eh? And unsettling. In this stable and never-changing ecosystem, their music will never end for billions of years. You see the billions to have and billions and, and billions are crawling towards you. You want to explore this world, not become part of it, so it's time to leave. The Clouds of Nimbus. You're immersed in the blinding light of the B-type star Chiruleus, shining hot and blue 
orbited by a dozen lava planets burned to a crisp. Is it Nimbus one of Saturn's moons? Planet, Nimbus, a gas giant very much like Neptune in size and composition, I'm except wrong. there's a lot more water, and seething hot Chiruleus showers it with 900 times more light than Neptune. So its atmosphere is warm enough for gigantic white clouds the size of countries to be lofted upwards by titanic warm updrafts rising from the hazy depths. Millions Wait, of what? years ago, and astonishingly quickly, life emerged and evolved inside tiny water droplets deeper down in the planet. Like extremophile microbes on Earth, they found ways of breathing methane and using exotic enzymes to harvest sulfur and nitrogen compounds from the air. Good old methane, as Chiruleus also grew known as and methane. Butter, the higher altitudes That's the gas your butt makes when you fart. Life spread. <laughs> Let's dive into the gigantic white clouds to meet it. Up here live quadrillions of tiny beings, a kind of cloud plankton in the clouds, so small huh? they're carried on the gentlest air currents. The most common type resembles flat, four-legged spiders, barely a millimeter wide. Oh, I hate spiders, chat. The sulfur they consume. I ain't trying to mess with no they sulfur spider. The wispy electrostatic the threads. Spider monkey. Spider silk. Get out of here. Differences between the top and bottom of the cloud oceans. A technique Zisticus crab spiders use to travel great distances on Earth. You're just in time for mating season. Billions of cloud oh, plankton gather to join their threads into oh, huge hurt. parachutes that ride updrafts for hundreds of kilometers. Here in the hot heights, they hatch their eggs before their life comes to an end. Bro, I already don't like this planet, on, dude. You got, you got spider monkeys flying in the air and stuff? Younglings. But not all life on Nimbus is tiny. The other way to stay up in the sky forever is to become a living balloon. Like the enormous sky whales, taller than a skyscraper, almost completely made of a wafer-thin membrane. They heat up trapped gases, making them less dense than the air around them, giving them buoyancy. The bigger their gas envelope, the more lift it produces, so sky whales evolved to be as large as possible. Only a lumpy, car-sized spherical bag of organs hangs at its bottom. Heating up all this gas like requires a, a lot of energy, so <laughs> it's time <laughs> to it's not a big old nutsack, bro! The spherical body opens up, unfolding and lowering a huge sticky like net into the white clouds. On Earth, the largest animals to ever exist, blue whales, feed by filtering millions of tiny krill each day. Similarly, the sky whales of Nimbus filter sky plankton out of the clouds. Most is consumed right away and burned in specialized glands to generate heat. The rest is converted into an orange and energy-dense nectar for later. This nectar is the most valuable resource on Nimbus. Yeah, I'm not Nimbus liking either one of these planets. I'm just to keep it 100 with you. So hungrily as the frog-sized jet squids, evolutionary cousins of the whales. Oh, the jet squids! Several of yeah. them trail each sky whale, waiting for it to be distracted or sleepy after a succulent meal. Jet squids are far less efficient floaters, but they're able to superheat and expel gases in short bursts like a rocket. Like vampiric hummingbirds, their long and pointy beaks try to pierce their prey and lap up some of the nectar inside. Unlike in the like stable eye, big ass mosquitoes, dude. On Nimbus is doomed. B-type stars like Chiruleus live for a few hundred million years at most, and this time is coming to its end. Soon it will be burning through its fuel at an astounding rate and violently burn our gas giant. Life on Nimbus to that planet, is only 600 Wasn't million years old and has barely 10 million years left. Is this tragic, or is this unique ecosystem lucky to have existed in the first place? Something to ponder as you move on before your jetpack runs out of fuel. Get, oh sevens of the spider monkeys, chat! Orsted is a Y-class brown dwarf, 13 times more massive than Jupiter, oh, and wow. with a magnetic field 60 times stronger. It belongs to the yellow star Sturgeon, which is about to disappear behind Orsted's shadow. But you're interested in Monnier, one of Orsted's many moons. It should get as much sunlight as our Earth, but its three-hour orbit around the brown dwarf means its days are extremely short. Gravity three here is a mere 5% orbit? of Earth, so the moon can only hold on to a thin carbon dioxide atmosphere that doesn't retain much heat. So its average temperature is far below freezing. As its cold night begins, a chill descends on Monnier and dry ice snow falls from the sky. A green, blue, and red aurora illuminates the landscape, made from star plasma caught in Austin's That's right, it'll be daytime in an hour and a half, chat. <laughs> atmosphere. 
The Sturgeon system was born from a nebula saturated with metals, so iron and lead are abundant. In this frigid cold, chock full of toxic minerals, life found unique ways to make the best of a bad situation by using ammonia instead of water, which would freeze in the short nights, and by incorporating magnetized minerals and Orsted's magnetic field into its biology. I hope on you're picking up on this, because like uh, this stuff's a little hard to understand. To it's all about science! But life on Monnier takes it to a whole other level. So As sturgeon rises and using magnets. rays filter through Orsted's crescent, a yellow Magnetic glow rushes forces, over the eh? horizon. The snowfall stops and temperatures quickly rise. The ground creaks and multicolored liquids trickle out from fissures all around you. Cryovolcanism, just like on Jupiter's moon Europa. Brittle seeming bundles start to unspool and climb off the ground towards the bright star. Like Arctic flowers on Earth sprouting in the short summer, these plants don't have a minute of daytime to waste. Their blossoms are saturated with magnetic minerals, making use of the extreme magnetism and low gravity to magnetism levitate, everywhere. reaching up to a kilometer into the sky, extending wow. the sunset for as long as possible. Hey, don't touch them. With a loud crack, the sky flower detaches itself from the ground and drifts out of reach. Suddenly, you're surrounded. Hundreds of shiny critters zoom by. They look like ice skating snails and can circle Monnier faster than the sunset. From their head, they extend two long stalks that are electrically conductive and merge up top. A magnetic kite I thought that, that said Coachella. The surface at <laughs> I thought that speeds. said Coachella. The skaters formed a symbiotic relationship with photosynthetic purple microorganisms that live in their shells. These biological solar panels produce sugars that they share with the skaters in exchange for continuous starlight. If the skaters ever stop, they risk their partners freezing and death by starvation. The harmonic scenery is violently interrupted as the ground splinters open and a spiked metal claw grabs a skater and crushes it. It belongs to an animal that looks like a cross between a sea lion and a beetle. As it devours its prey, it gets covered in pink and sparkly fluids. These ambushes hide in the crystalline ground, spreading an array of electrically sensitive whiskers that they use to detect their prey and strike just as they zoom by like living landmines that could be buried everywhere. Yeah, I'm going to stay on Earth, store. okay? The darkness will return soon. It's time to return home. Back home. Earth, warm and pleasant. Yep. It's good to be home in the environment you and all other life love you, that's Earth. not made up evolved in. But who knows, if you look up at the countless flickering lights, there may be countless strange worlds, home to life stranger than anything you've seen. Scientific speculation is fun, but also useful, giving us ideas about what we should look out for. And, who knows, maybe in a few thousand years, our descendants may actually visit exotic oceans, Heck fly over white clouds no. the size of continents, or pet metallic animals. And maybe, just maybe, even talk to others like us, who are also marveling at all the strange I, life in our universe. We aren't humans. Want to go beyond imagining it? Uh, all right, let me bring you in, chat. Chat, I ain't ready for no aliens, y'all. I mean, I know, I, I do. I don't even know what's going on. Stuff's getting declassified, saying aliens are real. I personally believe in aliens. The universe is way too vast. Too much is going on out there for the, for us to be the only ones. And uh, you know, they've found uh, fossils from from Mars. I mean, they're little micronisms. But anyways, this was awesome. I love again. I love this channel. I love getting my learn on and finding out stuff that's gonna terrify me when I go to sleep. But let me know what you guys think about these, these spider monkeys and floating aliens with big old balls. <laughs> hey, Wizzy, I had a blast checking this out. Please show in a nutshell some love. I subscribe to the channel and share. We're trying to get a quarter million subs. So if you haven't yet, please smash that subscribe button and join the Sauce Gang family. Enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, it's eat, sleep, and make beats. And as usual, we count on another. That's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Cuckoo, got number love for the Sauce Gang. Peace.